Hello everyone, this is the second episode of the built-ins random star path series uh, in which we implement together a new Nix built-in function and use that as an excuse to dive into the internals of the Nix codebase. As a quick recap from last time, uh, we've seen how to register the new built-in and we've given it a correct but very very inefficient implementation. We also did a test for it. In this new video, I'm going to pair with Sylvan Mosberger to improve on this naive implementation in the specific case where we have a direct access to the Nix store, meaning single user Nix with no daemon, no remote store or whatever. Uh, this will give us the opportunity to glance over the way Nix stores the information about all its available store path. And we're also going to briefly look at how this could be generalized to the other use cases by looking at the store abstraction and see how we can leverage it. I uh, hope you're gonna find all that useful and uh, apologies for the sound quality. And so back on this uh, random store path uh, built-in implementation. L last time uh, we actually wrote a valid implementation of the built-in, so we first uh, registered it to the evaluator using this register primop uh, structure. And then we wrote an implementation that was listing all the valid paths in the underlying store and picking one at random from this set. Uh, we also wrote a test for it. Uh, somewhere built in that ran random star path, uh, which was created a few uh, items in the store and ran Nix random star path. So, one first time just to check that the result was looking like a valid star path, and then running it 10, 10 times and making sure that every time uh, the evaluator was recognizing it as a valid and existing star path uh, with the, which the built-in that star path does because it's going to fail uh, if its argument is not an existing star path and so that's uh, all very nice uh, it has a slight issue uh, yeah, that if we run the REPL so we should have this random star pass thing available. And if you watch that in real time, you're going to realize that it's taking a good second to execute. Uh, oh yeah, that's very slow. Um, oh, no, less than that. Actually, one third of a second, probably my uh, impression is... Oh, no, that's because I'm not calling the function. Yeah, nearly two seconds. So that's very, very slow, and that slowness comes from the fact that, uh, not that one, uh, listing all the star path uh, is obviously slow once your stop starts to get uh, somewhat big. Uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be that big for it to be slow. And so that's really a non-efficient solution, and I mean, and here it's somewhat okay because uh, I'm doing all that on my local machine, so everything stays uh, reasonably fast. Uh, if I try to do that on a remote machine with uh, 10 or 100 milliseconds of ping and a limited bandwidth, uh, it's just going to be awful. So we want to... Is querying all store paths even valid on like a remote store? Uh, if, it's, uh, if it's a store you access over SSH, it should be valid. Mm. It's just going to be slow. Yeah. So we want something a bit smarter than that. Um, so for now, actually, we're going to do that in the simple case where our store is a purely local store, no daemon, no tunneling over SSH, no anything. Uh, just the simplest single user mode of Nix. Uh, because in that case, our store, which is an instance of uh, the abstract store class. Uh, oh, let's start that. It's going to be nicer. Uh, will actually be an instance 
of the local store class, which is an instantiation of the abstract store API. And this local store gives us a lot more things to work on. Uh, so as a, well, maybe a refresher or something new, uh, the way the local store works in a nutshell is that, so you have all these uh, store paths, which are under slash big slash store by default. Uh, but that's not the only information that's uh, kept by the local store. Uh, you also have a database um, when there's slash nick slash var, which stores a lot more information about all the path. Uh, we can look at its schema, which tell us what it stores. So there's a table which lists all the existing valid path uh, along with well, the path, the content hash, some metadata, uh, the signatures, um, which, uh, I mean, the, the, this database is both useful uh, as an optimization method because there's a lot of things that are much faster to query on a database like that than on a file system. And it's also serving as the source of truth. Uh, like for example, it, Nix can create some uh, files in the Nix store that are not or not yet valid store path. Because like, if you're not using the sandbox, the build will directly install things in the final store path into the store. But if you cancel the build in the middle, then you're gonna end up with some garbage in your store path, which would be annoying if that was the source of truth. But as it happens, the, the actual source of truth is this database. And if the star path is not yet registered in the database, Nix knows that it's garbage. So that's uh, very important for that. And also, I mean, there's some metadata like the Nahash, which can be used for um, a consistency check or the signatures, which can't uh, be uh, directly stored uh, under slash Nix slash store. And also it's used uh, to optimize some operations. For example, uh, the database keeps all the references between the different store path, uh, which means that uh, querying for uh, like, or the references of a given store path uh, will just mean querying the database for that, which is uh, incredibly faster than having to rescan the store path to find all the store path that it still references. Uh, but so that means for us concretely that uh, if we want to get a random star path, we just need to get a random row from this table, uh, which uh, if SQLite is gentle enough, should be somewhat easy, uh, or at least I hope so. Um, so to get back to our implementation, so what we could can say is that um, so we're going to try casting our store to a local store. Uh, I need to remember the exact incantation. Uh, but that should be something like that. Uh, yeah, if my C++ memory uh, let's correct, that looks yeah, right. I'm gonna have to double check what's a pointer and what's not uh, in here. Uh, why aren't you opening? Okay, let's do it the old way then. Um, Is the LSP working? Uh, that's a good question. Apparently not. Okay, something is trying to. Oh, that's not an STD function. That's a. That's a built-in thing, and it takes a pointer. And it returns a pointer. Okay. So state dot star is a pointer, and we just want. Uh, so this should be an auto star, just to make sure. And we're going to cast it to a local store star. Okay, so if we if the cast succeeds, our local store is not. Ah, uh, oh, here it is. Okay, 
let's keep it for later uh, is not the null pointer so we can work with it uh, and so do stuff and eventually return uh, the dot make string of something are we using uh, not the local oh. store oh. for making the query all pass faster uh well we could do that but that wouldn't bring us much because if the store is a local store this uh, right. this thing will already use the best method from the local store but we can use it to craft a custom uh, SQL, uh, SQL uh, query to directly get a random path uh, right and so um, in the local store if I'm right. Uh, that's not what I want. Okay. Uh, so this database, yeah, is, it's a private field from the, from the local store class. So we're going to have to extend the class. Uh, so let's add a new method. Um, random store path. Uh, which doesn't need to take anything, I guess. And in our primops implementation, we're just gonna say v dot make string uh, local store print store path of local store random store path. And that should be good. Uh, now we can compile that and it's going to complain at link time that we didn't implement it. But uh, the ID is here. And we've done the, the easy part uh, of the job. So going back to our local store implementation, which uh, we now need to implement this random store path method, which we can implement in the accompanying uh, CC file. How does Nix interact with the SQL database? I guess there's an SQL Lite. So there's a library. SQLite library, yeah. Uh, which uh, so they a custom wrapper around the C uh, SQLite API. And so the way it works, uh, at least for the local store, is that you have a whole bunch of statements of type uh, SQL statement, which oh, it's actually written verbatim here. It's a array wrapper. Uh, around the uh, raw uh, SQLite statement here, which comes straight from uh, the SQLite API. And all the methods that need to use that. Uh, so when, when we initialize the store, we create these statements. And then there's just a funky little API, uh, which we can use to actually fill these prepared statements. Uh, and that's what we're going to have to use uh, right here. So we probably want to add a new statement. Uh, SQLite statement uh, query random path. And when we initialize the store, we want to actually uh, query random path. Uh, initialize this statement. Um, so that's the bit where we're going to have to dig into the SQLite documentation, probably. Uh, because uh, is there Oh, there's a random SQL, SQL function, but it doesn't do what we want. We could also get into a, an SQLite shell to interactively run That's commands. That's a fair point. Um, so uh, I like to RL wrap them because otherwise it's just uh, the SQLite shell is very 
uh, silly. Uh, but actually, maybe there's a. Uh, oh, probably. I mean, let's create uh, actually something that's gonna look like a, a valid database. And the compilation failed. Oh, because it's not std dynamic cast. As I said, it's dynamic cast. Uh, let's change that. Yeah, I don't know how I assumed that I could just write 10 lines of code and compile them without having a compiler error. <laughs> uh, oh, and another one. Uh, so, 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 what's happening? A lot of stuff. Okay, so this random star path, this warning is normal because we've not implemented it yet. And uh, local store is not a type. Uh, how is local store not a type? Or probably because I need to import the right header or include include local store. That might help it a bit. Uh, oh, that's much nicer. And you. Uh, must because oh uh, because it's not a pointer is it's a nix ref of course uh, and is it a, a C plus uh, plus reference so ref, it's a it's a, it's a custom nix type but it's a, yeah it's a wrapper around the C plus uh, plus smart pointer uh, it's defined here and it's a so shared pointer so a pointer with ref counting. And the wrapper is just here to uh, make sure that it can't be null, uh, which is uh, a small but very handy thing. And uh, we can just uh, be somewhat up dirty and just take a reference to the thing it points to, and that should make it happy. Let's recompile. A bit of suspense. C++ is good to give that suspense. <laughs> is it going to compile right or is it going to give me 20 lines of template heroes or 20 pages? <laughs> the ampersand star is an interesting <laughs> yes. combination. Uh, so next local star random star path not defined. Oh, it should be. I actually wrote that. Uh, or, or did you did call it? Or, oh no, I I know what I did. Somewhere I defined a function random star path, uh, not the actual method. Uh -huh. Of course. So that should work. Uh, well, let's uh, just make it return something that it doesn't complain. Uh, well too much parallel things going on. I'm not sure make likes having several instances of your training at the same time. Okay, uh, so actually we can run that test up just once. That's gonna give us uh, a database to work from uh, because you could also use the uh, just your local actual next uh, database. I could. I just don't want to because it's a new writable by root, and I'd rather not uh, uh, directly try and work on it. An, an alternative would be to make a just a copy of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I could and uh, work on uh, that. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, yeah uh, I think we have one right now, which is under uh, this directory. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but should also be a bit easier since it only contains the, the 100. It only contains 100 store paths. 100 store paths. So we can look at the schema. That's the one we discussed earlier. Uh, and if we... We can... Up here we have all the valid paths. Uh, and we just need to be able to select a random one. I, I think in that instance, Google is going to be our friend.
because I'm pretty sure order by random limit when that's that's how I I like that looks Google, pretty good even when it's not Google oh <laughs> and oh and now we have a different star path each one isn't that wonderful okay so that's gonna be our query uh, what was the name of the statement yep uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. okay so that all that whole thing is not really typed as you can see these statements all have the same type and it's just going to be passed by the uh, SQLite library to replace these question marks by stuff that you're going to fill after the fact. Uh, but in our case, we don't really care because uh, there's no argument that we need to pass to the query. Uh, and let's whoa, whoa, whoa. let's just respect the capitalization of the rest. It's not very idiomatic, I think, in SQL, in SQL but uh, that's how everything is written. And so now we just need to call this statement. So there's two ways we can call a statement. Uh, maybe let's just look at some examples. Uh, two methods that we can call. There's this exec, which doesn't return anything. And there's uh, uh, this uh, how did this use yeah use function that uh, returns a, maybe a use which is something from which we are going to be able to extract uh, individual uh, lines from the SQL answer so in that instance that means that uh, so first we need to lock the database uh, I'm gonna shamelessly copy paste from what's done in the other methods because I never exactly remember uh, how we do that oh, so we've wrapped that into this uh, retry SQLite uh, wrapper which will just gently retry if there's an error that seems to be uh, transient then uh, we probably don't need to use a transaction because that's one simple read-only query and actually we can even directly return the result from that and so this log thing should give us back uh, why do you ah uh, yes uh, yeah that should be no it's not it should be after the curly bracket uh, I believe. so let me remember so yes you're right yeah that didn't make any sense otherwise that way okay and so state has a cl type uh, it's a lock of an X sync which doesn't give us much but essentially I, I think it's a pointer uh, yeah that's uh, that's exactly it so we can do state get the statement well statements and the so query random path dot use And this thing, not out, out, oh, should have a, a next method. Yes, here. Uh, which should tell us whether we have. Turns a sorry. boolean. Oh, it returns a yeah, boolean. Yeah, which tell us whether we right. have a row. And uh, we can get str hmm. on it to get. Uh, the actual string contained in it because it's supposed to be a string so let's uh, use random path dot next uh, so in that case we're just gonna throw an error uh, lower 
case. Trying to get a random path from an empty store. And if we have something, uh, we can just uh, say return uh, use random path dot get str. So the first colon of the answer because is uh, this path thing. So we just uh, sorry, we we want to pass it as the store path so we pass our path of this thing and that should work uh, let's try compiling it at least but since uh, the LSP seems to be working now uh, it probably would have complained yeah nice I'm surprised SQLite is so simple to select a, like it is, it was just fairly small statement to select a random. Yeah, yeah, but that's a, that's a good thing. I would have been very random annoyed random. if it was some very uh, complex Arcan SQLite because yeah. I would have been lost, but that way I don't have to lose the face. I, I was already like, I was already like thinking about g getting a random number and having to modulo that by the number of lines in the database. Yes, but, but I'm not even sure there's a guarantee that uh, there's a sequential uh, index that you can use. Because uh, if you delete path, uh, then there's probably not. Uh... Anyways, it's really nice that we have this order by random. Thing. Right, right. And now so we can actually try running the test again. Why did the test fail, by the way? The f oh, it did fail because uh, the implementation was uh, not the right one. So in the tests, by default, it's always going to use... Oh, interesting error. We're going to come back to that. Uh, it's always going to use the local store by default because uh, uh, that's uh, the fastest for the local tests. And then there's, there are some ways to make it use a daemon or different versions of the daemon and all that because we also obviously want to test that. But that's good for us because then the run just running make our test uh, is going to test our local store implementation, which is nicely failing, saying that our statement uh, hasn't been initialized, uh, which looks very strange to me because we have just created it here. If you search for another statement, like add like one of the other ones, is it used somewhere else? That's like is there another part of the initialization? So, no. And no, nowhere else. Uh, what did I miss? Uh, so we query random path, we create state db. Hmm. If we look at the, the error, it says see an assertion. Yeah, there's an has assertion. Failed. Do you know where that, that assertion state, is? Uh, essentially, that means that the statement has not been initialized. Oh, it's null. Um, uh, we can actually have a look at the uh, where the statement is from, but that might not be very uh, helpful. Yeah, assert statement, that statement. And this statement thing is mm. essentially initialized uh, here when we call this create function. Uh, is the, the function in which the create is called, and when is that called? So that should be, uh, oh, I know what's happening. It, I created it in the wrong place indeed. I mean, that, that whole function is the constructor oh. of the local store, but that whole block is only available when the uh, content address derivation feature is enabled, which obviously ah. isn't the, obviously which isn't the case here. So just going to move that slightly above and recompile. Yeah, thanks. That explains a lot. 
Nice. Uh, so. Recompile. Bit of suspense. And actually, we can we can also just see the query valid, valid paths statement just above uh, the one we created, which oops. query valid paths. Uh, it was about query valid paths, the plural one. You mean paths? Uh, no, the multiple one. Um, the the right that one. Yep. Yeah. Query valid yeah, paths. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the one. And, and the statement of that is, is just a very Oops. simple select path oh, yeah. from. But that's because it's the, it didn't have the. Uh, yes, but that's exactly what um, what query uh, the, the, the yeah. other method that we used to call uh, in the primops was using. And that's the one that's slow because we have to yeah, return so all the path. Right. While uh, if we use that, uh, SQLite will be smart and only. Uh, serialize or do stuff with the first row of this uh, random sorting. All right, yeah. Okay, what if we try running it again? <laughs> hmm. This is a different terminal window. We can still oh. see in. Oh, so it runs. Yes. It it's not that fast still it's surprising let's try uh, so we can manually enter the test environment and uh, by the way anyone uh, watching that please remind me or open an issue about documenting how we do that and <laughs> we can uh, call the shell script for that test manually have a bit more insight of what, and what's going on uh, oh, that's the all of these next or add calls, which are a bit slow. Okay, makes sense. But now the that is also a bit surprising. Uh, it's a bit surprise. Oh, I, I, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, it, it, it's no nothing new. Maybe there could be a ways to make it much faster, mm. but uh, it's okay. But the point is, anyway, is that now this call is much faster. Which is good. Um, so let, let's commit that maybe. Uh, what do we have here? Uh, yes. 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 Okay. Um, so far so good, um, so shall we now try to do the more general case? Uh, we probably won't have time to do everything today, but at least we can have a, a glimpse, uh, and see what's gonna, what's happening. Um, so if we're not, uh, in the local store case, so we have our store, which is store that one, which is an instance of this fairly generic uh, store class. Mm, I mean, more an interface actually defined here. Uh, cl uh, class store, exactly. Which defines a lot of different methods that the actual store implementations are going to implement. Um, and what probably we could do is take this ad hoc uh, random store path method from the local store and make it a proper store method so that other store implementations are going to be able to implement it uh, in their own way, uh, which means uh, I don't know where to put that because uh, this thing would need a bit of cleanup. Let's put it here. Uh, so random, and let's make it. Let's make it virtual. And 
So generally, uh, because there's a lot of different store implementations in Nix, uh, so I would like to have the local store or the uh, local demand store or the different stores over SSH or the binary caches, which are also stored. And not all of them implement all the methods. Like for example, you can't uh, build something on a binary cache. And so in general, uh, some methods are considered as being optional, which is implemented by this uh, uh, and, and supported. Class uh, just here. So the default implementation is just going to throw an error and individual stores, yes, it needs to be override, uh, can now override it to provide a meaningful implementation. And in our primops thing, we can remove all that logic and just say uh, 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 state.store print store path and remove all that. And so that's gonna raise an exception in any case except the local store. Uh, but then we're going to be able to build on that uh, to make it work for the other cases. Uh, yeah, if I don't recompile it first, it's not going to make too much. Uh, let's commit that. Also. Uh, why did I? Oh, you commit that. Okay, and uh, we're just gonna wait for the test to pass and uh, see how we can run it with something else uh, than the local store to see it miserably fail. Could we also reuse the old implementation as a generic implementation? So we could, uh, I'd rather not do that because uh, it's probably better to have it crash than having be insanely slow if you run that on a binary cache or on a remote store. So ah, right, right, and it's, it's slow as in like O of yes. the number of store points and that you have. So for for big yeah, stores, and it's gonna also be really I slow. think we are going to be able to implement that method for all the stores for which uh, query or valid path uh, can be implemented. So in practice, it wouldn't be very useful. Oh uh, yeah. But we could, yeah, we could have done that. I guess the SQLite, I guess the SQLite case might still be like linear in the number of valid store paths, but. Oh, it's probably linear, but the coefficient oh, is, it actually? Uh, I'm not is sure. much smaller, yeah. Yeah. I mean, being linear in the number of star path uh, can Although be I fairly okay, because the number of star path is not that big in most cases. It all depends on the coefficient that you put in front. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so building nearly done. The nice thing with this store API definition is that nearly everything depends on it. So once you change that header file, you're bound to recompile everything. So, okay. So this test again, the local store still passes, but now, and uh, that's something else that uh, I'd be very uh, pleased if someone could open an issue uh, begging me to uh, actually document it. Um, but we can, export, uh, oh, actually I don't remember, uh, there's a magic environment variable, yeah, nix daemon package that we can set. 
Um, and if that one is set to something that contains slash bin slash nix, uh, then the tests are going to use that as a daemon and run using that daemon rather than directly a local store. So now that we've exported that, we should be able to run that test. And if you look at the beginning of the test run, actually it calls this start daemon function, which itself is going to uh somewhere uh called nix demon uh probably at the end of that big path setting yeah nix demon here and everything is gonna run with this demon because of nix remote set to demon and if we do that then trying to call built-in random start path is gonna fail uh with a pretty bad error. I thought unimplemented was by itself doing some nice uh, crafting some nice error message. Uh, uh, unsupported. No? Ah, that's because there's actually an unsupported function, which I guess yeah. does that. Uh, yeah. So that's what we needed to use and not throw in support it. Okay, never mind. Oh, so let's recompile the world again. Uh, and let's be very bold and commit it without waiting for the compiler to finish. Um, but uh, I think uh, that's going to be enough for today. Uh, that was already a lot of fear on my side because I wasn't sure whether I would be able to implement it in a reasonable amount of time. So not too much emotions for the same day. And does that sound good? Yeah. yeah okay, cool. Pretty well. And then I'm going to push all that to the repository so that you can play with it if you want. And next time we're going to look at how to, well, implement that for something else than the purely local store. So how that works through the daemon uh, over SSH or not, because that's going to be fairly similar. Uh, and maybe before that also look at the different store implementations that exist to have an idea of uh, what we still have left to do for this to work. And uh, well, thanks a lot, Sylvan. And have a nice day. Yeah, no problem. Bye. Have a good one.